Okay, so I kind of want to open up with talking about this particular portion towards the end of the latest fairy tale chapter because I want to pick you guys' brains because I kind of know where I stand with this and my perspective on Zareb's character up until this point at the very least finding out his true goal of what he's really trying to accomplish. But I'm interested in what a lot of you guys have to say about this. I know there's going to be the people that regardless if it's the greatest thing in the world, you're going to say bullshit. But we find out in this chapter that Zareb's ultimate motive is the Neo Eclipse. Essentially, he wants to restart time to before he became immortal and stop all those events. And you think about it, many things would change. Zareb is the catalyst to so many different things. If it wasn't for him becoming immortal and, and just the chaos that we've seen, like Acnologia wouldn't have come to be. There's just so many different things that would have changed. We wouldn't have the timeline that we have now. Like a lot of deaths would have been prevented if Zeroth never became mortal and a lot of things, you know, that transpired from Zeroth essentially starting things up. But then it's like, I'm looking at it and you got to think maybe the reason why, and even though he's already kind of batshit crazy, but maybe the reason why a lot of Zeroth's character is still not completely evil. There's the times where he's just kind of normal and saying fucked up things, but he's not completely in that chaotic, just, ah, end mode is because in his mind, he's preserving the thought that, Oh shit, you know, whoever I kill, it doesn't really matter because none of my actions or anything that happens in, in this timeline is going to matter once I achieve Neo Eclipse. So maybe Zeroth in his mind is thinking that I could kill this one, kill that one, and that's why he was even probably as fucked up to Lacarde, although I still think that... <laughs> that, that makes a pretty fucking dope and savage person as far as being a villain is concerned. But, you know, maybe that's the reason why he doesn't care about killing. I mean, he does and it still pains him because he doesn't want to do these things sometimes, especially when it takes over him and he just starts killing for no reason or whatever. But I do think that in a part of his character is preserved that, yeah, I, I can kill this person. I can be fucked up because I'm, I'm going to reset all this shit anyway. I'm not going to have this curse and be immortal and all that shit. So a part of me is thinking that that's the particular reason. Now, there's a lot of different variables in there for him to complete his goal. And we found out in this chapter that one of the big things is, yeah, he does need Mavis. And the reason is because her incredible magic powers. And he also needs this ravenous ball or time lapse or whatever the hell you want to call it. I've seen a couple of translations. He needs those two things in order to fully go back and reset everything. Everything. So, in essence, you got to think, well, and, and I like villains like this that tote that gray line between black and white where it's not just as simple. His ultimate motive is kind of pure because him going back in time will prevent many catastrophes from happening in history. So, in essence, that's a pure goal, right? But it's his method to getting there, which you could compare to many different villains. Yu Yu Hakusho, Sense We, you know, a lot of people, they want something good. They, they have a good vision in mind, but they're going about it fucked up in a wrong way. So it is interesting. And I do say as much shit as Fairy Tale gets, some of the characters that have been preserved and being decent or, you know, decently structured, Zeroth is one of them. Obviously, Actinologia too, although things have been looking a little shifty lately, but still Actinologia is one of them too. But Zeroth's motives and his goals and everything really tie into something interesting and I, i'm kind of curious i guess for starters the question i want to ask is what do you guys think about Zeroth's ultimate motives do you think that that's the reason why he really just doesn't give a fuck about killing or hurting anyone because he's gonna reset things anyway and none of it will matter after that fact or what is you guys thoughts on that because there also is the argument that well wait a minute sometimes he, he cries about these things and he's upset about it and i think a part of that is just at the end of the day regardless if you have intentions to resetting everything or making everything right it's still fucked up at the moment it still hurts at the moment especially if there's a decent side of you within yourself that is like yeah this is wrong so that's probably why Zeroth will be in pain and some of this stuff will bother him because it's still wrong it's still fucked up so it is interesting to dive into that and again no matter what you say about fairy tales some characters are preserved like Zeroth with being interesting and having some creativity to their personality and their you know overall structure now the chapter opens up obviously with the flashback to 777 and I'm still kind of on the fence on whether I truly believe that Layla is gone because we've seen so many this Anna bitch that came out of nowhere is here which crazy theory 
probably ain't gonna happen, but I do want to throw it there to see what you guys think as well. What if uh, Layla is actually Anna, or Anna's actually Layla, and she's kind of portraying to be Anna for whatever particular reason, but maybe that could be that's Layla all along, and she's pretending to be Anna for some ulterior motive. Just wanted to throw that out there. It's probably not any weight to that whatsoever, but it was something that passed my mind. And we see that when she arrived, there was five shots, and that was seemingly the Dragon Slayers and how they got split up. Kind of curious why they were shot out like that, and it was kind of like these tiny little dots, so they, they were turned into tiny dots when they came through the gate. Really interesting the way that that kind of happened, I guess, but still a little bit confusing the way Fairy Tale's been doing things lately, and I guess that was also the reasoning why Anna hit things, but still nonetheless... It, if she would have just searched for them and found them one by one, we could have had something totally different and set up an army, so to speak, in preparation for what was to come, you know, the battles with Ak and Logia and everybody else that they had to fight. And it also makes sense that Layla didn't know things to set up preparations as well because Anna hid shit from even her. She didn't tell her the full truth. And I I'm right now wondering, like, is it really true that Layla's dead? Did she really die of, of, you know, being weak? And, I mean, you can imagine how much magic power she had to have in order to make the Eclipse go through to begin with. But I'm still kind of toting that line of, like, I don't know if she's really dead or not. It just... <sighs> fairy tale. It, it doesn't seem like that would be the case. But you never know. Maybe this is the one character that actually died and is going to stay dead. But, yeah, there's my theory there again that maybe Anna is actually Layla and she's playing this role for whatever fucking reason. And then we find out again about the plan or we kind of found that out last chapter but we get a little bit more explanation of this ravenous ball or the time lapse or whatever and what they're trying to accomplish with sending Akologia into an infinite loop. The thing about that is... For starters, when they've seen the plan, because we've seen Actologia has some insane hearing. When Erza and Irene were talking and he showed up, oh, so this is the mother. He heard that shit from, a, he was supposed to be very, very far away, right? He, he was transported very, very far and he was able to hear all that conversation. And then, of course, he stomped that bitch out. Why wouldn't he be able to hear where he's probably, what, you want to say 30 feet away from the spaceship or, you know, something along the lines of that? You telling me he ain't going to be able to hear their plan? And on top of that, you telling me that he sees some bald there and he's not going to be able to avert it he's just going to say oh you know he's going to just bite it or try to jump into it like i want to give acnologia a lot more credit than him just being a mindless moron to fall for such an easy trap like that that's like i don't even know some mario kart shit like hey they're dropping something in, in front of me let me move out of the way you know what i'm saying like a part of me thinks that acnologia is way too smart for that and that's not going to go accordingly that just seems too like everything has to you know acnologia has to just be a moron and just completely fly into it and not give a shit and that would be very 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 anticlimactic if this is the way Akinologia goes out he's following a fucking flying uh, ship and he falls into a ball and that's the end of him if that happens I'm not even gonna lie you will see the biggest biggest that I've done to date fairy tale rant because I would just be that's how he goes out that really but we're neither here nor there yet. You know, that's still a ways off to see if that'll actually happen and it'll go according to plan. Because if it does happen, also that'll, I guess, foil Zero's plans. And I think we need a big battle at the end. And I don't think Fairy Tail's gonna go out with, well, Zero's plan is done and now we just gotta kick his ass and act low, is out the way. Seems too smooth, too easy. Don't want it to happen. Don't think it will happen. And something about this chapter that kind of bugged me a bit. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of like, wait, what? Happy Lucy and Gray and Happy saying, I think I could read some of these words, some of the letters and shit like that. And they're talking about opening up the book. Now, I don't remember exactly, but I do believe at least one of those motherfuckers have heard when Igneo had the book, he said, whatever you do, don't open that book. In fact, when you get your hands on that book, give it to me. I'll take care of it. If they open up that book and they start reading shit or whatever, who knows what's going to happen. But then again, this could partially be why not so eventually we'll go full on e and They're going to open up the book on some stupid shit and read some shit out. And Natsu's going to turn into half demon or some shit. And then they're going to have to go and console him. Or this could be the big mistake that fucked shit up to begin with. So it's kind of like, uh, I don't think you guys should be fucking with that. Like maybe you should go counsel this with Mavis or somebody that's actually intelligent beforehand. Why would you open up this book right now? I understand you want to help Natsu or whatever, but it's a foolish move. 
big. Neil didn't want it to happen. He wanted them to just give him the book so he could take care of it. Opening up that book, very, very stupid decision, and I'm curious to see where that leads. With all that being said, honestly, it was an okay chapter. Good chapter, I want to say. I know there's people that are complaining different things. I think the two dumbest things is, one, them trying to open up that book. Stupid as hell. Two, the fact that they're betting on Actinologia being stupid enough to fall right in line into that ball. Like, one, if he wanted to stop himself or just avert it, he could do that because, remember, they said it's like the size of what, like an orange or some shit like that? You can avert that easily. So, that's another thing is like, especially if Hero goes through with it and that's the end of Actinologia, him getting swallowed up into some time balls. Like, that better not happen. <laughs> kind of curious what you guys think about this, though. What do you think is going to happen if they open up that book and start reading shit? Is that going to make Natsu go full-on E&D and just slaughter Zerub there? What do you think about Zerub's character as far as him wanting to reset things? Do you think that's the main reason why he just doesn't give a fuck about killing people left and right? Because it's kind of like, it doesn't matter. I'm resetting everything anyway, so whatever happens, happens, right? And do you think my theory, small theory, crazy theory regarding Anna actually being Layla and she's just hiding the part for whatever reason? Reason, has any validity to it or is this a bullshit crazy theory that i came up with any overall thoughts of this chapter fairy tale i want to say six and a half maybe seven probably give it the seven there was some interesting bits it's just kind of like don't open up that book you fucking idiots Acnologia better not fall for that really really ridiculously simple trap but that's all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram and stalk my facebook to get more when the video ends, I'm for that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day.